grand opening of the Appalachian Trail Museum. See, uh, if you notice that this band here up front here, they're, uh, they play music every day. They go out and they hike five miles every day. And the average age is actually 62, but you see how it keeps them in shape there? They look much younger than that. first look at a museum several years ago, we hired a consultant and he envisioned a phase one facility about the same square footage that we have now at the old mill here with an estimated cost of $525,000. Because of the volunteers, we just barely cracked spending $50,000 to open this. Welcome to Pine Grove Furnace State Park, which is part of the best state park system in the United States of America. And I'm not just saying that. We actually won an award last October from the National Recreation and Park Association. We were designated as the best managed state park system in the country. Twelve years ago, Larry decided that we were going to have this museum. And he has, and he and all of you, uh, you have given this commonwealth, you have given this country a gift. And I want to thank you for that very much. And now we have the honor here in Pennsylvania of, of having the first hiking museum in the United States of America. Uh, that is something to be very proud of. Today is, is about three other things. It's about history, it's about vision, and it's about legacy. Now, 89 years ago, Benton McKay proposed the idea of the Appalachian Trail. And thanks to the efforts of literally thousands and, and maybe even countless numbers of, of individuals, volunteers, many of whom are with us today, uh, we now have a 2100 mile trail. Uh, there's about 10% of that in Pennsylvania. How many have read the uh, Bill Bryson classic, A Walk in the Woods? <laughs> How many can, can tell me what his definition of Pennsylvania was? <laughs> there, the lady got it. Say it again. Pennsylvania is the place boots go to die, so that's, that's exactly right. Everybody who volunteered in some way or another to work on this museum to raise your hand. Okay. Now keep them raised. Keep them raised up. I want everybody who, who came here today to take part to also raise your hand. <laughs> One of the newest publications about the trail um, by Stackpole Books, but um, appropriately enough, it's actually a reprint of some of the stories that first appeared in the uh, two-volume uh, Rodale series that was published back in the 1970s. Uh, and some of the stories that appear here um, are about some of the very people who are recognized in, in the museum. Um, you know, Gene Espy, um, Earl Schaefer, Grandma Gatewood, and, and others, as well as uh, Myron Avery. This museum will not just tell these important stories of the trail, it will become part of that legacy for many, many years to come. Now, I got asked to speak because I'm the resident hiking junkie on the board of, uh, of commissioners. Uh, our visitors bureau, the Cumberland Valley Visitors Bureau that has participated uh, in this, uh, we're looking at ways to market this area and one of the many ways that we're going to accentuate uh, as a strategy is we are the midpoint of the trail and uh, wanting to do my independent due diligence yeah. research. Uh, I'm sitting in the uh, around a fire in the uh, Clinton River Gorge before crossing the McKinnon Pass over to Milford, Dutch, Aussies of course and New Zealanders, Canadians and 
some others, German. So I asked them all, do you know about the Appalachian Trail? And three quarters of the hands went up. So that was, that was pretty, uh, I thought that that was pretty unique. So we're looking to do this not uh, uh, just to preserve the environment, but to accentuate our region. This is a great day for us celebrating the opening, but, but we have much, much more still to tell. It's really been gratifying to see the support that the, the museum has built over the years. For, for the cat lovers in the crowd, we do have a cat exhibit in the museum. Uh, the, the, the only cat who's done the whole trail. So, one, one of the, the complaints we've got, we, we haven't told all the stories of the trail. We don't have an exhibit for dogs yet. Uh, we can't get to, to everything. For me, what's been special about this has been the process, the literally hundreds and hundreds of volunteers that have put so much work into to building this. When, when you see a thousand square foot museum, you have no idea how much work went into that, the care and love and affection. And that's all spark, part of the special character of the Appalachian Trail community. Thank you. The location's perfect. Right on the Appalachian Trail, near the midpoint. Earl had his first campsite on Holly Mountain near here. The poem uh, Vale Moshe, uh, Vale Moshe uh, describes the occasion. I'm not going to read it all, but uh, the last two lines were My first lone camp was in Vale Moshe on Holly Mountain many years ago. My sister Louise, she's older than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the youngest. But let me first tell you a little story about Larry Luxembourg. I called him a couple of months ago and I said, Larry, you know, if it would help promote the trail, maybe I could go out on it and I could hike in. And Larry said, Lucy, if you want to hike the trail, you do it after the ceremony. I'm going to make sure you survive. Mama was an extraordinary, ordinary individual. She never smoked, drank, swore, or chewed, lied, cheated, or stole, or told dirty stories. <laughs> she laughed at herself for saying that damn thing, talking about a river dam structure. She was very meticulous about her personal character, which I would describe as righteous. She was judgmental and didn't hesitate to tell the two snuggling love bugs on the Greyhound bus that it wasn't proper public behavior. <laughs> oh, what would she say today? At the time of my father's death, we were approached by some visionaries here present who earnestly requested that we not be too hasty in disposing of my father's belongings, but rather save some of his personal effects for exhibit at some indeterminate future date in the non-existent museum. <laughs> if the family found it too burdensome to store these treasures, one of the planners would find a way to do so. These were clearly people unfamiliar with my family's habits. <laughs> Ten years later, when Larry contacted me to let us know that a home for the AT Museum had been procured, I walked into Dad's study, affectionately known as the pit, <laughs> and wondered where to begin. For, for tape to cut. So what better than duct tape? <laughs> I'm going to hold one end. And I'm going to hold the other. Now, doing the honors today is Schwartz, better known as Benton Mackay Schwartz. Doesn't he look like him? <laughs> He is the 13-year-old uh, son of two very active trail maintainers here in Pennsylvania who met each other on the trail. Benton is also a maintainer, which would pl please his quasi-namesake to no end, and somewhere Meyer and Avery is laughing. Okay, go for it, Benton. Yeah.